time for Nerdgasm. Hey, what's up guys? Jerry here, AKA Barnacles. And in this episode of Tech Tip, I will be showing you how to set up your very first live stream on either the Twitch TV or YouTube live streaming networks. Now this doesn't require any prior knowledge of how to live stream and we will be working with a software package that is completely free and open source even. So if you cannot figure out how to set up a live stream at the end of this tutorial, then I am a horrible teacher. Now there are a lot of different software packages that you can use for live streaming. Stuff like XSplit, the built-in uh, NVIDIA experience. Uh, you can also use Steam, even has live streaming capabilities. But they're all severely limited in the personalization of that live stream. And they're more just focused towards just streaming the gameplay and your voice. And there's some other elements that I like to add to that. So my favorite software that I use is called Open Broadcaster Software. And it's actually freely available, open source, and on GitHub. So it's, it's actually a really great software package and you never have to pay a dime for it. Now there's two versions of this tool available. There's the OBS Classic version, which is what I will be using in this tutorial, but it's only available on Windows. If you're on OS X on a Mac or on Linux, you're gonna need to use the new OBS Studio. But just be warned, I did try OBS Studio before shooting this tutorial, and I ran into some resolution problems with the VM. So it looks like they still got some bugs and kinks that they need to work out. But if you are on OS X or Linux, by all means download Studio and you'll still be able to follow along. Most of everything I'm gonna do is still gonna apply. Once you open OBS, you'll notice the UI is actually pretty plain. It just says not streaming. You have some boxes down at the bottom of the screen that are for your scenes and your sources. And then you have a whole bunch of buttons in the lower right for starting your streaming, starting your local recording, previewing the stream, editing the stream, and so on. And we're gonna walk through each one of those. Now you'll notice if we just click preview stream, we just get a black box. That's all you get. So if you were live streaming right now, you would be live streaming absolutely nothing but the voice because if you look down here at the little microphone you can see the meters going up and down as i'm talking because my voice is actually mapped because it's using the default microphone on the system you can opt to change that to something else if you want but that's the default configuration okay so the first thing that we're going to do here is we want to add a source to our scene so we're going to right click in the sources box we're going to go to add and you see you can capture windows you can capture a monitor you can put an image on there you can put text over it uh, you can even do video capture devices like webcams and capture cards. So we're going to do a video capture device. We're going to just call this webcam. And then you can see a list of drop downs. This system only has one webcam attached to it. So I'm going to go ahead and just select that as the default. But you can add as many webcams as you want. Now we're gonna go ahead and leave the audio input device to disabled, but if you were using the internal microphone on the webcam, you could select it directly. But we're gonna leave that disabled because I'm actually using a microphone plugged in through USB. Okay, let's go ahead and hit push okay. Hey, look, I'm back. So let's say that I want a scene where it's just me. So when I'm, when I'm doing my live stream, let's say during game loading menus and stuff, I just want you guys to see me. I will set up this scene as just that. So we're gonna go ahead and rename scene, just so I know what it is. And we're just gonna say full webcam, doesn't matter, you can type in whatever you want. And now I'm gonna create a new scene. I'm gonna right click on this box, say add another scene, and we're gonna call this gameplay with webcam. So now I have two scenes in my project. So you can see gameplay with webcam has nothing, full webcam has me, see, nothing. And I can switch between them while I'm live streaming, which is really cool. All right, so now I wanna add a source. So we're gonna go ahead and add my webcam again. So we go to video capture devices and we'll just do webcam again. You can also create something called a global source so you can keep reusing it so you don't have to go through this whole process over and over again. But for the sake of this demonstration, I'm just gonna do it. Now there's another button called edit scene. When you click edit scene down here at the bottom of the screen, you get a light red box around the video. And what this allows you to do is drag it and resize it. So now I can put my video down here if I want. I can put my video up here if I want. But then we just got a black screen back here. So we actually need some gameplay now. So let's go ahead and open a game. I'm gonna open up Castle Crashers. Okay, now before I start the game, I'm gonna hold down the Alt key and press Enter, which is gonna make the game go into a windowed mode. Now, you can also Alt tab out of the game, but I find this method works best. Now we're gonna go ahead and get OBS back up on the screen and we're gonna add a source. We're gonna right click inside sources and say add game capture and we're gonna call this Castle Crashers. And you can see it already knows that Castle Crashers is the game that's focused, the last thing that I use. So I'm gonna go ahead and just click okay. And now you can see that Castle Crashers is actually inside the box. You see that? It's running in the background and it's running in my broadcaster. Now my webcam got overwritten. You can see because Castle Crashers is at the top of sources. So I'm gonna click on webcam. I'm gonna right click and say order and say move up. And there's my webcam again. 
So now I actually have a webcam on top of the scene. Now, a cool tip that I wanna show you guys is if you hold down, you have to be in the edit scene mode. So see this little edit scene button down here? You wanna make sure you're in the edit scene mode. You're gonna hold down the alt key and grab the edge and you can drag it in. See how I'm cropping it? It's not resizing, it's cropping it. So if you hold the alt key, you can do this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna crop it in on that side. I'm gonna hold the alt key and drag it on the other side. Hold the alt key down here at the bottom, drag that up a little bit. And what I'm doing is just trying to get as much of my face in there as possible without the surrounding uh, information. That way we're just not taking up a lot of the screen real estate. So this is probably the default live stream that most of you guys see. And what I can do is during loading screens, I can go ahead and just click full webcam and it'll switch back to me in full frame. Now I apologize for the lag guys. Again, I'm doing this on a VM on your computer. It's not gonna be that laggy. So now I can talk to you guys. I can talk to the audience. I can field questions while things are loading. And then when the game is ready to go again, I just click on gameplay with webcam and it'll go back to that scene. See, here I am. Now, obviously when you're inside of a game and playing it, it's gonna be really hard to have to alt tab out and change the scene. So you can use hotkeys. So what I can do is right click on full webcam and I can go down to set hotkey. So I'm gonna set my hotkey on this one to control one. See, it's control plus one. And then I'm gonna set my hotkey on the second one, control two. So now, while I'm inside of the game, so I'm gonna go back to the game, I'm gonna press control one, and then we're gonna go back to OBS, and you can see it switched the scene. So now when you're inside of the game, you can literally just do the hotkeys. So even though you can't see the OBS interface, you can still control it while you're in the game. Just be careful not to set hotkeys that conflict with the game you're playing, because that could create issues. All right, so the next step is now we need to set it up to live stream. We're gonna start with YouTube and then we'll move over to Twitch. So what you wanna do is go up to settings and then select settings. I know that's a little, little redundant. And then you have a whole bunch of options over on the left side of the screen. You have general encoding, broadcast settings, video, audio, hotkeys, so on and so forth. There are a lot of options in here. Don't let it overwhelm you. So what we wanna start with is encoding. Now under encoding options, the default is gonna be a thousand kilobytes per second. Now, what you wanna do is figure out how much upstream bandwidth you have. So I recommend going to a site like speedtest.net and conducting a speed test to figure out how much up, upload bandwidth you have. Then because you're gonna be playing a game, factor in that you're probably gonna need some of that bandwidth for the game itself. So dial it back by about a quarter. And what I usually recommend if you have the bandwidth for it is no less than 2,500 kilobits per second for 1080p at 30 frames per second, or no less than 2000 is 720p, just from my own experience. But if you can get up to 3500, it's gonna look amazing. So for my upstream, I'm gonna go ahead and set it at 3000 kilobytes per second, roughly three megabit. Okay, now I'm gonna go down to broadcast settings and you can see right here, mode live stream or file output only. If you set it to file output only, it will just save a local copy to the hard drive. So if you're recording like a let's play video or something like that, you can totally use this to do that. You don't have to live stream. You can also record locally and live stream at the same time. So you have a physical copy locally on your system. It's actually a very versatile software. So we're gonna go ahead and set it back to live stream. And then down here you can see streaming services there's a whole list there's twitch vaughn good game daily motion youtube i mean there you can stream to all of these places with obs we're going to set it to youtube slash youtube gaming and then what you're going to see down here in the fourth box is play path or stream key now this is the most important part of the whole live streaming process now to get that key, you have to go log into your YouTube account and you have to open up the dashboard. Now you can see here in my dashboard, I have under live streaming, I have stream now, which is in beta, but you can use it. And you also have events. And if you click on events, you can actually schedule event for a certain time, set up all the parameters, the thumbnails, the video description, everything, and then go live immediately when you want that event to start. If you wanna just start live streaming to your audience now without any of that crap, just click stream now and then set a thumbnail. Just click change thumbnail and set it to whatever you want the thumbnail to, to be for your viewers. Give it a title. I'm just saying shooting a tutorial video for you guys. Give it a description in a category. You can also go over and enable monetization cards. You can set up your stream options. There are a lot of options in here, but the most important one for live streaming down here is the one you can't see. This is your stream key. Now what you have to do is click the reveal button, which I'm not gonna do because if I show you guys my stream key, that gives you access to stream on my channel. So what you're gonna wanna do is click reveal and then copy the contents of this box 
into the stream key box inside of OBS. This is important. Once you put your stream key in this box and you apply the settings, when you start live streaming, it will go to your channel. There's no usernames or passwords. You just use the stream key. Now again, guys, I cannot stress how much you need to protect that stream key. Do not ever let that slip on stream. Do not ever tweet it out. Don't email it, nothing. That stream key will give somebody complete access to stream on your channel. And that's why you'll notice in most programs, they protect it even when you paste it with a series of dots to mask it. Now, another setting I recommend changing is down here where it says file path. I would change that from FLV to MP4 both above and below right here. And the reason being is Windows 10 at least has a hard time playing back the flash video files with the default built-in media player, but MP4 files play everywhere. So by setting that extension, it just works. You'll also notice that we have some warnings below. It says your OBS settings are not optimized for YouTube. Please use the following. Go to advanced settings and set the keyframe interval of four seconds. So we wanna go to advanced settings and find keyframe interval. And we wanna set that to four. It's nice that it gives you these little tips, honestly. Now you can see it back at broadcast settings, we no longer have that warning. Now you click on video. Right now it's already set up exactly how I want it. It's gonna live stream at 1920 by 1080 at 30 frames per second. But if you want, you can stream at 60 frames per second or you can drop it back to 1280 by 720 if you don't have a lot of upload bandwidth or you wanna do 60 frames per second and 1080p can't handle it, either because of your system or your internet connection. I recommend that you play with all of these settings. Your broad, go to your encoding, uh, play with the bit rate, make sure you get a bit rate where you're not dropping packets and we'll talk about that here in a little while. And then make sure that you have a video uh, quality that your users want. Honestly, 1280 by 720 is gonna be crisper than 1080p at a lower bit rate because you're not gonna have all those compression artifacts. So figure out what you can do comfortably and feel out your viewers. Also, and make sure that they're enjoying the stream and that the content is good. And if they're giving you feedback and you're seeing a lot of people say, oh, the video is skipping, the video is chugging, then go back and reevaluate those settings. It is a little bit of trial and error depending on internet connection and system performance. All right, for the purpose of this live stream, I'm gonna leave it at 1080p. Now, all of the other settings down here like audio, I'm just gonna leave on default because I already have my microphone mapped as my default device. But you can also go in and change these to whatever you want depending on your configuration. So if you have like USB headphones plugged in or USB microphone, you can select those explicitly if they're not just working for you. Okay, so at this point, we are set up and ready to live stream. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stop the preview and now I'm gonna click start streaming. And I am quite literally live streaming to my channel for this demo. All right, now down at the bottom of the screen, you see a little green square and it says that I'm approaching about three megabit per second at 30 frames per second and that box is green. That is perfect. That means that I have enough upstream bandwidth that I'm not dropping any packets and everything is working perfectly. Now, if we go over to the YouTube live streaming dashboard, you can see that it's starting. The stream is starting and the stream health is good. That is exactly what we wanna see. And now it says I'm live. So right now I am live to YouTube guys with that composition that we just set up and we should see it showing up here in just a second. And there it is. We are now live. All right, and I am now playing the game. Got my arrow keys here. But you can see I have the webcam up in the corner while I'm playing the game. And from my point of view, let me show you guys what I'm seeing. So now you guys are seeing exactly what I'm seeing on the screen right now. You don't see the OBS dashboard. You don't see anything like that. You just see me playing the game. I can run and I can jump. I don't see my webcam up in the corner. I'm just I'm just playing the game. Now you will suffer some frame rate drop from this because encoding video through OBS is actually fairly expensive. So you're gonna want a decently high powered system with a decently high powered graphics card or you're gonna wanna set those settings down a little bit lower. All right, so open up OBS. You can see right here, I still have myself up in the corner. I have the game footage in the background, and for some reason I'm frozen. I don't I don't know why I'm frozen up in the corner. I shouldn't be frozen. And this is probably weird for all the guys watching the live stream. I'm quite literally live streaming me making a video on showing how to live stream using OBS. So this is this is a little bit weird, guys, and the stream's gonna go offline and come online a couple of times throughout this. So now if you want to stop the live stream, you just click the stop streaming button. And at this point, you are no longer live streaming. And now you can see from the YouTube dashboard that I am no longer live streaming. It says that I'm offline and chat is still going and everybody's really, really confused as to why I'm live streaming and why they can't hear sound. It's because my microphone was being used for the recording of this demo and not by the OBS running in the virtual machine. I know that is very confusing. Just forget you heard it. All right, let's go back to preview stream and you can see I'll go ahead and enable my webcam. 
there I am again. Hi, and I'm sorry for the little glitches, guys. It's because I'm actually running in a virtual machine. Uh, things are kind of a little bit slow. The webcam's not always working. Uh, it's, it's something that I didn't really expect, but we're gonna go ahead and continue with the demo because I think we've got some good stuff here. All right, so the next thing is if you wanna live stream to Twitch, it's actually very much the same. You just wanna go up to settings. You wanna to go to your broadcast settings and change it from YouTube to Twitch. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna get your stream key from the Twitch dashboard. So log into your Twitch account, go into the dashboard, grab that stream key, copy and paste it directly into here. And then make sure that down here where it says advanced settings, it says you should set the keyframe interval to two seconds and you should use X264 encoding under advanced settings. So just make sure that you have everything set so that all those red warnings go away. That is literally the only difference. And currently you can only stream to Twitch or YouTube at one time. If you wanna to stream to both services at the same time, you're gonna to need to use OBS Studio because it's gonna have future support for that. But the old version of OBS, you can only stream to one or the other at a time. All right, so now I'm gonna show you guys how to up your game a little bit and make things look a little bit more professional. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up Adobe Photoshop on my system. You can use any program you want, MS Paint, whatever. Uh, it doesn't really matter what graphics editor you use. I'm gonna demonstrate something here that will make you look like a lot more professional live streamer. So we're gonna go ahead and just create a new image and we want that image to be a, the same size as our stream, which is 1920 by 1080 or 1280 by 720. Um, but you wanna opt for a larger resolution or at least an equal resolution to whatever you're ever planning on live streaming at because you can downscale it, but when you upscale it, it looks like crap. Let's go ahead and hit okay. And now we have a big white box. So what are we gonna do with this big white box? Let's go ahead and drag in an image. Open up my little photo folder here. I have a little matrix background. I'm gonna go ahead and just drag that out there. And now I have an image as my background. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and rasterize that layer because that'll allow me to edit it. Now I'm gonna show you something really cool that you can do. So we're gonna go ahead and crop out two sections of this really quick, just as a demo. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up top of the screen here in Photoshop and say I wanna do a 16 by nine aspect ratio because that's the aspect ratio of 1920 by 1080. So I'm gonna go ahead and just create a box, like let's say about like that, and I'm just gonna hit delete and cut it out. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna double click over here on the matrix background. I'm gonna say I wanna do a drop shadow. Again, this is just my own personal preference. I'm just doing this as a little demo for you guys. So I'm doing a little drop shadow. You can see there's some shadowing on the edge there. And then I'm gonna cut out another box, but I want this one to be a four by three for my camera. And we'll just put it over here, just a little demo. So we'll just put it right there and we're gonna cut that out too. And it still has the same drop shadow effect because it's associated. So now I've got some stuff on here. Let's go ahead and drag in another graphic just so I can demonstrate this point. Uh, let me pull in Barnacle's thinking. So here I am right here. I'm gonna put this down in the corner. I'm gonna shrink it down just a little bit. Hold on, let me lock the aspect ratio. If you guys would like to see me do a tutorial on how to use Photoshop uh, for some simple things too, let me know, because I use it a lot. I'm not a pro at it, but I know a couple of things. So let's go ahead and do that. And then uh, let's go ahead and pull in my Barnacles Nerdgasm logo. So let's go find one of the logos. All right, so here we have my logo. I'm gonna go ahead and lock the aspect ratio and just shrink it down. And we're just gonna stick it down here in the corner somewhere. All right, so now I have a logo. I put a couple of graphics on here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete the background because we want it to be transparent. So let's go ahead and just delete the background and I can see get this checker pattern. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up to file and we're gonna save this, but you have to save it as a PNG because we wanna preserve that transparent back layer. So we're gonna say, you can already see I did one OBS backdrop right here. So OBS latest backdrop. Okay, so now I save that. What I can do is now open up OBS and what I'm gonna do in my composition here is I'm gonna say add an image. And we're just gonna call this backdrop. Let's go ahead and browse and open up that image we just created. So that's OBS latest backdrop. Click okay. And now you can see we have a backdrop image. Now what I wanna do is put my webcam perfectly in the box up there. So I'm gonna click edit scene. I'm gonna go ahead and drag this, hold on. Edit scene, move this around, come on. Webcam, there it is. It can be a little finicky. And I'm gonna go ahead and just stick this in the background of that of our box up here. And then I'm gonna to go to our gameplay and I'm gonna shrink that down so that it fits in our other box here. So let me go ahead and just stick that up in the corner, scale it down just a little bit more, get it fit perfectly. 
And there you have it. You now have a professional backdrop with the camera facing through. And you can put as many cameras as you want. You can put a camera on your keyboard, on your mouse, one of the in your entire gaming setup, and put them all in little windows around here and create your own custom backdrops. And again, I can switch between full webcam and my backdrop. So just by pushing control one and control two. And now we're back in the game. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on how to set up your first live stream on YouTube or Twitch TV using the open broadcaster software. If you have any further questions, leave them down in the comments or come over and tweet me. I am at Barnacles. Also, if you guys enjoyed the video and you found it useful, please give it a like down below. If you thought it was total rubbish, give it a dislike. This is how I steer my channel and how I know if I'm doing a good job or not. Also, if you guys wanna support my channel, check the links down in the video description. I have lots of deals down there. I have links to my shop if you wanna pick up an official Barnacles nerd Nerdgasm shirt or anything else to help out the channel. I truly do appreciate it. All right, guys, enjoy live streaming, have fun, and I hope you all become the next PewDiePie's or Markiplier's out there on the internet. And if you don't, you're gonna have a hell of a lot of fun trying. All right, guys, until next time. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please take a moment and subscribe to my channel. It helps me a lot. Also, come over to Twitter. I'm at Barnacles. I'm a real social guy. Also, if you have a couple of minutes, check out some of these many other videos. I made them myself.